Hey everybody, this is Eric, and today I want to share with you how to make a cool Art Deco inspired poster, Inspiration, using just SketchUp model and layout, like this. So I guess what makes up an Art Deco poster, what makes it unique? I think if you see here behind me, it's sort of the simplicity of the colors, it's the boldness of the shadows, the shadows are the same color. It's sort of almost like it removes a lot of detail and then it brings in some other interesting features, Hollywood inspired lights and some really cool typography. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna touch on all those aspects right now. All right, I don't need those. This is our end product, our inspiration and where we're going with it. But what we need to do is start like most places in SketchUp. So before we go to layout, we actually need a model to work with. This is something I found on 3D Warehouse. It is the Rex Theater in Athens. I've never been there, but it's a really beautiful Art Deco building. And it kind of has the look that I maybe want to go for. So first thing I've done is I've set a elevation or parallel projection. So we're looking straight on with no perspective. And the other thing I want to do is make sure to point out that what makes a good model is if you turn on hidden line style, you want to make sure that there's geometry. So you don't want one that has all um, photo textures. Like you see here, I've got some photo textures, but I actually have some geometry as well. So we're going to override those textures with color. And that's why you want to make sure that the model you're working with actually has geometry. So speaking of overriding colors, I've already done this step because I want to spend more time in layout and less time in SketchUp. So if I click on this view that I've saved, you can see what I've done here is I've just sort of knocked out all those colors. And I'll tell you really quick how I did this, which is opening up the styles panel. I have two styles, my default style, which is what you saw a second ago. And I have my sort of color poster overridden um, style. So there's two things you need to do, which is change the edge color. So you can see in this case, I've already changed the edge color to sort of a dark red color. And the second thing you need to do is change the background color. So I've also changed the background color to this sort of pink crayon color. You'll notice if I change it, if I wanted to invert this, I could go blue as the background color, and then I would want my edges also to be blue. And you can see what happens is that your shadows actually turn the color of your background color. So when I go back to that sort of reddish color, uh, I think maybe that was a little bit too bright. You can sort of pull back on that sort of brightness just a little bit, and I'm going to update that. So the last thing, the third part of this process was the shadows. You'll notice here, because I adjusted the color of my background, if you look close, the shadows here, uh, they can either be lighter. If they're lighter than your lines, you'll see your lines. And if they're darker than your lines, your lines, you'll see them too. They'll turn, um, your lines will almost invert. In this case, I was trying to, my goal is to try and find a darkness of the color that matches my edge style or my line style so that what happens is that they end up disappearing completely. So what I want to do is zoom back out and sort of get that centered as much as best I can in my viewport. I'm going to update that because I made a change to it. And now it's ready, as soon as I save it, it's ready to go to layout. So I'm going to go file. I'm going to say send to, not template, send to layout. It's going to prompt me for a paper size. I'm going to pick A3 portrait because it's kind of a tall, narrow building. And I think that'll fit. I think that'll look pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is now that I'm in layout, I'm going to start by turning some margins on. This will help me into the paper settings under document setup. I will turn my margins on and I might beef them up to something a little bit bigger because I want some sort of white space, some breathing room. And if I can't see my margins, it's a little hard for me to see them. I kind of typically will make them a little bit darker color just so I can see those. So with my margins on and my SketchUp model nicely centered, with the selection model, with the SketchUp model selected, under the style dropdown, I can override some style settings. In this case, I'm going to turn the background color off so that I have just this, uh, just the model itself. And depending on the size, this is where I kind of want to think about the size too. If you say preserve size, preserve scale, then when I adjust the boundaries, you'll notice that it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to undo that. But if I turn preserve scale off and I want to make the SketchUp model a little bit bigger, like I want to go all the way to the edge of the frame. In this case, I can do that, turn preserve scale back on. And then from there, I can shift this 
um, wherever I want. It depends on how much room that I need for my text and how much room I want for my ground plane. But we'll call that good for this. So under the Layers tab, I am going to delete the Every Page and rename this Model. The reason why is because I want to draw on top of my model. So my text and my graphics I want to be on top, and my background color I want to be below. So I'm going to move that down. So when I lock my SketchUp model, the cool thing about this is it's locked. So if I try deleting it, if I try drawing on top of it, nothing happens. So on my background layer, I will add a shape style. So don't need a stroke for this, just a color. And I don't know what color I will adjust it once I see it with the, once I see it in here. Um, but right now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and see if my grid snap works. Sometimes grid snap doesn't snap exactly where I want it. So, you know, I kind of use it or don't use it depending on the situation. So in this case, what I want to do is maybe pull, have something that's somewhat dark and blue. So a nice dark blue background, and that's pretty cool. I'm going to do another rectangle, and this time I'm going to snap it here. And this is going to be the same. I kind of want to pick up the shadow color. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it exactly, but I'll try to see if that's the shadow color there. And let me do that the opposite order. Select that first, grab that shadow color, and I want that to be for my ground plane. And this is totally optional, but I kind of want to beef up the edges around this thing to make them even thicker. So I am going to, instead of a fill, I'm going to do a stroke, and I'm going to pick that same background color. Might darken it a little bit so that it contrasts with the model. And then using the line tool, um, depending on how thick you want the line, you can change the number either before or you can change it after. And this is what I love about drawing in layout is that I can just hold shift and snap to my SketchUp model. And then I just basically trace it. And I'm not looking for perfection here because um, I would normally go maybe a little bit slower, but because I kind of want to just get through this. I'm going to kind of go a little bit quicker. Hopefully everything snaps in place the way that I need it to. And I, again, I'm not work, looking to get everything perfect. And as you see, the building's actually not symmetrical. So you could just draw half of it, copy and mirror it. But since this building ledge is a little bit different on one side, I'm just going to go ahead and draw the whole thing. So last thing I want to do there is I want to bring that to the front. And the reason how I do that is instead of arranging it, I say move to layer and I put it on the graphics layer. And that's pretty cool. So if I turn the background off, you can see I've got just that sort of line that goes up around it and I've got the SketchUp model. So it's nicely organized that I can kind of control the visibility of things. So speaking of the background, I'm going to lock the graphics layer so that I don't accidentally draw on that. And we're going to be drawing those spotlights. So in this case, I'm going to change the color first. I'm going to go to a white color. If you don't have crayons, uh, if you're on Windows, you won't have these crayons. And you know, sorry, don't worry about it. Um, you know, just kind of pick up whatever color you want using the color wheel. And then I'm going to do something like this. And I'm just making this up because I don't know, you know, exactly how big the spotlights are or where they should be coming from. The cool thing is about this though is that because I'm drawing. Um, because I'm drawing, I could behind the SketchUp model, I don't have to worry about being super precise. I could just kind of come in here and just say, you know what? I just want to draw something like, I don't know, like that and hold shift. Something like that's pretty cool. They sit behind the model. Now, this is where I'm going to save myself a little bit of time by grouping this, copying it, pasting it. I'm using keyboard shortcuts. And then if you grab this pull tab, just to, like in SketchUp, you can just type negative one. And what it does is it scales it by negative one. And so what it does is basically it mirrors or inverts that uh, these spotlights that are coming out of the back. So lastly, we need to add some text. I'm going to come up to my text tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm on my graphics layer because I want to be on the very top. I want this to sit above everything. And I'm going to type in Rex. Uh, let me see, I probably want caps for this, Rex Theater. And I'm going to open up my text box. Now this looks a little bit different probably for me as well on Mac. 
this is sort of driven being driven by the operating system and so if it looks a little bit different for me that's why and let's see here change that to white to kind of match the my border and adjust that sort of try and get that somewhat centered it's pretty cool now once you have the text looking exactly like you want it you can just copy that paste it it pastes right in place so it's right on top and then i'm just going to type in athens because i like to know where it is greece and change the font size of that one to something much smaller so that it's uh so there's some hierarchy shift put that into place now at this point our poster is done now i may want to say you know what there's not enough contrast between the shadows like the shadows look too light and you know if you're thinking that at home if you're thinking that is home you know okay cool we're thinking the same thing so if i come over to sketchup come over to my shadow settings darken that up a little bit if i do that i may also need to come over and into my edge style and i may also want to darken up my edges because remember i wanted them to kind of disappear and then I like that, save that, update this, save the whole model, and then in layout, I can right click this. You have to be on the SketchUp model to do this. You right click it and say, update SketchUp model. And everything gets a little bit darker. So I love being able to control, being able to have that sort of live link between SketchUp and layout. So if I wanted to make a change, if I needed to shift the building, if I needed to add something to the building or change the sign, I could do that really quickly and really easily. Now this last step is totally optional, but I'm gonna wrap up by throwing a paper texture onto there, just to kind of give it that vintage look. Now, if you do decide to do this at home, make sure that you're giving your paper texture a transparency. And the reason for that is because uh, layout currently doesn't support the transparency. So you wanna make sure you're using like a transparent PNG for that, if you want that sort of paper texture. And in this case, I probably would prefer to have that behind the SketchUp model instead of um, in front. So that kind of gives it just that little bit of that sort of vintage look that I'm after, like an old poster that was discovered. I don't know if you like it. If you don't, maybe put it on its own, on its own layer so that way you could toggle it on and off and see the difference. You know, if you don't like it, hey, you know what? No harm, no foul. So. Thanks everybody for sticking with me and watching the process of going from a basic SketchUp model to what I think is a really cool, if I lean this way, there we go, a really cool poster in not a, little, a lot of time with not a lot of effort. Um, so I'm going to say thanks for watching as always. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think. I like making layout videos. Do we make enough layout videos? Is there something you want to see in layout? Let me know. I love layout. We'll make some more for you. Let us know in the comments below and I will see you next time.